So I tend to talk about how good or bad an anime is based mostly on their plot. And of course, that isn't wholly unreasonable, but it is a bit disingenuous. A lot of well-loved anime are enjoyed not because their story was the deepest or most meaningful, but because they have great animation, sound design, or even just one really beloved character. Plot, however, is something easy that I, as a casual anime viewer, can identify with. While I can tell you if an animation style bothers me, or if I dislike a song, I can't exactly tell you why, and that inability to articulate my feelings is a barrier that keeps me from praising some anime on things it does well, despite some plot contrivances. The other day I watched Be the Beginning, a Netflix original series about a genius, a detective, a super-powered god kid, and their respective searches for the truth. And while I had some obvious issues that sparked the need to make this video, on the whole, I really liked it and I'm excited for the newly announced second season. I can't tell you about the animation or sound or production values that I guess I liked, but I would recommend it to a friend and I would watch it again without issue. And now, despite all that, I'm going to talk about the only thing I know how to. So I feel like this is as good a place as any to put the spoiler warning. Be the Beginning is a show that comes with some twists and turns. If you do not want to be spoiled for those twists, go watch it on Netflix. Don't worry, I'll still be here when you get back. Suspense, or thriller, is a fun genre. Maybe some of the most fun that can be had with a serious tone and darker story elements. It's a genre defined by a slow build for characters figuring out what kind of danger they're in, while we, the audience, generally already have a sense of what's to come. And it's this careful balance that keeps us on the edge of our seats, willing our heroes to find that one piece of evidence that lets them know they're in danger. It thrives on two equally important levels, physically and intellectually. Physically, the audience needs to see that there is a legitimate danger to our protagonists that they can't just brute force their way through, usually a monster, supernatural force, or a person with some means to obtain deadly weaponry. But that doesn't mean only bodily harm can function as this danger, it's just the easiest method to convey it. Mental and emotional damage that is excessive can function as danger too, a crushed worldview that fundamentally changes a character, or a secret that breaks a person's mind can be equally as dangerous and thrilling to watch if done correctly. Both of these can be seen in a show like Madoka Magica, where we clearly see that witches are downright deadly, and that learning more about what makes magical girls magical drastically changes our main characters emotionally. Intellectually, the audience needs to know that our protagonist doesn't have all the answers. We need to believe they don't understand the threat enough through most of their journey to just outsmart it. This doesn't necessarily mean that the protagonists are stupid, or that they can't make good calls before the climax, but just that they're at a disadvantage for most of the runtime. Steins Gate does a pretty good job of this as the main protagonist, Okabe, is indeed a very smart man surrounded by equally smart people. He even knows what his villain is. The tension comes from the fact he has to figure out how to manipulate time travel to save his friends and how often he gets close and fails. He has the technology and the intelligence, but because the writers keep him in a fallible state, we wonder if he'll ever be able to save everyone, or if that's even possible. There is also one other factor that keeps a thriller thrilling, or really keeps any genre grounded, and that's establishing the rules of the world. It's hard to feel scared in a world with magic that can seemingly do anything unless you create limits and concrete rules that cannot be broken. Simple things like saying the threat is invisible to the human eye or that our characters are strictly human and have human limitations sets up the audience's expectation of tension. When we know the rules, we are able to judge when our protagonists are in real danger and when they're not. If you set up a scenario that the monster can only function at night, then the audience has a predictable spike of emotion when they see a character go out in the dark. This is necessary for your protagonist as well, as the audience needs to be aware of what they can expect in terms of skills or abilities as they try to figure out a solution to a tough situation. All this leads me to be the beginning, where they do none of that. It's a story about three main characters searching for some truth. Keith is a retired detective coming back to the force to find the person who really murdered his sister. 
Koku is an amnesiatic boy who murders criminals as a calling card to a person he can't remember, and Lily is a normal woman caught between the two, searching for the mysterious bee while trying to learn more about her enigmatic co-worker. Be the beginning plays out like that fan fiction you wrote when you were younger, where you went chapter by chapter and added whatever was necessary to get a cool scene. Everything that seemed to be important at the start is useless by the last episode, and any information you learn gets rewritten when convenient. Some clues, like touch cannabis, are used to solve multiple, if not all, the puzzles. Some things, like the tablet that predicts all and yet is also conveniently wrong, are just mentioned right before they're relevant via flashbacks. Some character traits, like Koku's amnesia, just go away when the information they have is suddenly necessary. Some characters, like Izanami, start out by saying they're part of a backstory, but are only important as a plot device. What starts as a more grounded detective thriller involving clues and analysis becomes a playground for one character to show off how smart he is. And I like it, because I like this character, but by then it isn't really a thriller anymore. Physically, there is some danger, but it's never implemented in a way that makes us actually fear for the characters. Bran, one of the detectives who works with Lily and Keith, finds a program that seems to be watching the detective station employees from their phones and external cameras. This creates the tension for the episode. Bran knows something clearly whoever is against them does not want him to know. But when the show has the opportunity to show the stakes, show the real danger in pursuing this organization, they back out. Bran gets in an elevator and is attacked, but neither dies nor suffers any permanent damage, and his team members find both the culprit and the information he was trying to get to them regardless. This sets the stakes in the opposite way one wants from a thriller anime. It sets the precedent that any character, not even just our protagonist, can be in precarious positions with almost guaranteed death and still make it out just fine. And that echoes throughout the rest of the series. Characters will be stabbed, drugged, exploded multiple times, and no one on the good side will die. While it leads to a happily ever after ending, it diminishes the impact of any attempt by the opposition to do evil. If they can't even kill off Brandon, a perfectly fine person but no one inherently important to the plot, with a stabbing, in an elevator, alone at night, then why should I expect they'll kill off our main heroes as allied forces are rushing to them? Intellectually, one of the protagonists just knows too much. Keith is a genius, a veritable BBC Sherlock, from his lackadaisical attitude towards any act of crime down to the text on screen showing his thoughts. And perhaps because I am a fan of Sherlock, I do really like this character. Unfortunately, he's too smart for the show's own good. Keith never seems to really figure things out so much as have a series confirmed. Got a building rig to dispense a poisonous gas killing thousands? Don't worry! He's not even at the crime scene anymore, but he psychologically profiled the guy and has determined it to be knockout gas. He ends up knowing everything about Koku's past, even being the source of part of it himself, and every question Koku has, Keith has an answer for it. This sets up the terrible precedent that Keith will always know the answer. And this only gets worse, as three episodes later we learn Keith has pretty much figured out who the two main villains must be to orchestrate this plan without any substantial clues within the show, and in episode 9 when he full out says he's always known who killed his sister. And that takes all the tension from the remainder of the story. For three episodes, they hunt down the two villains, one for Koku and one for Keith, that should be climactic showdowns based on years of torment and searching. In reality, the audience no longer expects one of our heroes to die, nor do they expect that Keith could be wrong about something and fall into a trap. The only mildly surprising thing to come out of the last three episodes is how Keith handles facing Gilbert, his old friend and Erica's killer. It becomes two episodes of exposition dump to try to reveal all the information the characters already know, but that we, the audience, don't. At the end of it all, Gilbert gives his evil villain speech that culminates to having a burning need to constantly kill and a weird bro crush on Keith that makes him want to see Keith murder someone too. And although his motivations are pretty generic for a guy who used the equivalent of Avengers Secret Service to hide the fact he kills people for fun, his last moments where he forces Keith to kill him, relishing in the fact he got him to pull the trigger, are honestly pretty great. Be the Beginning functions almost as a reverse thriller, where the audience is trying to figure out the threat while the characters already know about it. 
Withholding information is a legitimate way to build tension in a story. It makes an audience want to know more about that character and what they know. But withholding information only works when the audience knows that there's characters that have information to begin with. And B, the beginning thrives on telling you that someone knows something only seconds before that's relevant to the plot. Earlier, I mentioned rules and how they ground a story by creating expectations an audience can follow. One of B the Beginning's weakest points is strangely the Koku third of the show about demi-humans. What should be intriguing and create the most danger ends up like a 400 episode shonen series. Endless escalation and no limits on what our hero can take before turning everything around with the power of determination. Or at least, that's how it feels because the characters that know about demi-humans never bother to explain their limitations or what makes them different. We infer that they have superpowers, or at least some of them do. Some are practically immortal, some aren't, some go crazy and need gold to sustain them, some seemingly don't, and behind it all is this tablet whose contents are conveyed through multiple characters expositing about their current situation and how it was foretold by this stupid all-knowing tablet. It's all very confusing if you're looking for a straight answer, and since the other two-thirds are about a detective mystery, the audience is always looking for a straight answers. So really, Be the Beginning fails as a suspense thriller anime. But then, why do I like it? Why would I recommend you watch this over something like Gurren Lagann, another show I had story issues with? Character. It's all in character. Where Gurren Lagann's story issues interfered and ruined characters for me, B the Beginning's story issues almost boost my love for the characters. Keith may just be a different take on the stoic genius character trope, but the way he knows almost everything and still interacts with the other characters on an even playing field is pretty fun. He still has goals, he still has fears, and he still has trauma, so even though we don't necessarily fear for him, it's still interesting to watch him fear for himself. You want him to get emotionally closer to the R.I.S. cast. You want him to learn to rely on them. And you want him to get some sort of closure to allow for that. Lily is just great. She's cute in a non moe way, brave and empathetic without being stupid. I want more of her in season 2 because she's just so well written for what I want in a lighter thriller. She cares for everyone fiercely and is willing to go to great lengths to save people, easily risking her life. And her detective skills are more piecing together clues no one else bothered to look at than just knowing things everybody else doesn't. Which makes her a fun detective to watch and cheer for. And Koku? Uh, he's fine. Nothing special, but, but fine. But the rest of the supporting cast are funny, witty, and intriguing. I won't go so far as to say they're compelling, but for supporting characters, they do better than average for the most part. Overall, Be the Beginning isn't a bad show, but it shows precisely how you can set up a perfect thriller and fail to engage your audience properly. It makes the show lose that sitting on the edge of your seat factor, and without it, it's just an action flick with some elements of mystery. The second season was announced, and I don't really know where they're going to go from here, but if they can take what they have that's already good and fix some of the issues, I can see it being a great anime. And that is how not to make a thriller. I really had fun making this video and I hope you guys had fun watching it. If you'd like to see me talk more about anime, I have another video about anime that you may uh, not like as much, but it's there. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.